Hey folks, um, so today we're going to do probably the hardest thing in, in GCSE Geography, which uh, in paper one anyway, which is the Global Atmospheric Circulation Model. Um, it's basically how air moves around the Earth. So we're going to put our title today over here. It's the Global Atmospheric Circulation Model. And if you're not sure what that means, um, if you are worried about it at all, we're just going to say that is in red pen, I'm going to put it. How air moves around Earth. Now, it looks scary and difficult, but I promise it's not too bad once you get into it. And there's clever ways of teaching this in the classroom, excuse me, with like balloons and other things. For this infographic, I'm gonna keep it as simple as possible. So I'm gonna start by drawing a circle. And I'm gonna to totally freehand this, because you're doing that as well, and I think it's fair to be doing the same thing. So it's not gonna be a perfect circle, but just draw a circle, <laughs> and then that's obviously gonna be our Earth. And draw a line across the middle. And that's going to be uh, zero degrees, which is our equator. And then uh, over here, we're going to just draw the sun. I know the sun looks super tiny compared to the Earth. <laughs> um, don't worry about that. It's just a figurative thing. It's just to help you remember that, you know, the sun is coming towards the Earth like this. Uh, lots of ultraviolet radiation. Okay, it does have an impact, so we do need to remember it there. Now, the Earth has got lines of latitude and lines of longitude, and I'm just going to remind you what those are over here because it's easy to forget. So, lines of latitude go laterally, which is sideways, okay, and then lines of Longitude, and this is how I used to remember it when I was at school, long, tall, um, go up and down. Those of you that are my students know I've got this on the door of the classroom, so it's nice and easy to remember. So I'll just go over that in red as well. So sideways, and then up and down. Okay, we're gonna add just some lines of latitude. So if you watch me first and then you do your own, we basically, we're at zero degrees for the equator. We've got to get in our, I'm just gonna shade them slightly, our 30 degrees north and our 60 degrees north, which is where we are. And then right at the top, I'm just gonna do that so it's kind of like, and then right at the bottom around Antarctica is, we've got our 90 degrees. Now what I'm gonna do is literally repeat that, but going south. So we've got our 30 degrees south, and then our 60 degrees south, and at the bottom where Antarctica is, we've got our 90 degrees south. Okay, I can just add a couple of labels to those. So we've got down here, Antarctica. And then at the top we've got the Arctic. There we go, and that's magic. So I'll just give you a second to catch up with that. It really doesn't matter if your Earth isn't a perfect circle. Um, it's just about learning where these different lines of latitudes and things are. Now, AQA require you to know how Earth, um, how air moves around Earth, basically. Um, and to do that, we need to think about the sun. Now the sun, which is over here, ultraviolet radiation, comes in and it hits the equator, sort of not closer, but the equator gets all the sun. Whereas the Arctic, which is no further away than the equator, it's just the way this is drawn, it gets sunlight at an angle, so it's colder, like much, much, much colder at the poles. 
uh, same for Antarctica, and then it varies to everywhere else. But it's important to remember that part of things. Now, when you've got a lot of sun hitting the equator, if you think about the equator, you've got the rainforest, you've got um, you know parts of Africa and that there. It's, it's, it's warm, very, very warm, but it is also low pressure because the air is rising. So we need to draw, and I'm going to use a red here. If you have a red, this would be really handy. The air rises on the equator. We'll draw a line this way and a line that way. And it happens the other side as well. It happens everywhere on the equator, but we're just going to draw it on this side because it's a bit easier. And that's low pressure. Okay, and that's low pressure as well which means rising air, okay? Um, it's what helps the rainforests create clouds, if you think about it. The air rises, cools, condenses and rains, and it's warm and it's humid, isn't it? As that air goes up into the atmosphere, let's draw a couple more arrows, it cools down and it basically swings around and falls back down as kind of colder air. So I'm going to do that. Not not super cold, but just slightly colder. And the main thing is that it is high pressure. So when air is falling, we call that high pressure. And that's measured with a barometer. And if you won't remember that, just put it in brackets. That's sinking air. sinking. Now, those two sections that we've just drawn there have got names, and they've got the same name, which makes life quite easy, actually. Um, and they are called the Hadley cells. That's a cell there. So Hadley cell and Hadley cell. And they are either side of the equator. And hopefully, just looking at the colours of the lines there and, and what's happening with the air rising and falling, or low pressure and then high pressure, that helps you understand um, what's going on in those two cells. Now we've got to add our next uh, two cells and then the final two. So we've got four more to go, but actually only two different names. So if we take our area here where the the, the air is sinking down around 30 degrees, around where the sort of deserts are. Now, what happens there is the air moves. This is into the feral cell now. And it starts off cooler. And I'm going to just change pen because it warms up slightly. There we go. And it comes around a bit warmer and then joins up, cools down and joins up again with that sinking air. Can you see the cycle being formed there? Now this is uh, known as the feral cell. I'm going to write his name in a different colour so it's a bit clearer. And apparently the person who discovered them, and it's a feral cell on this side as well, uh, was known as William Ferrell, not the Will Ferrell, but um, yeah, William Ferrell. So let me change pen again. We've got our slightly warmer air coming in this way. It's exactly the same. It's just a mirror image, basically. And we've got our air coming out this way and along that way. And that is known as the feral cell. It helps you to remember Will Ferrell then all the better. Right. Now, 60 degrees north, that's remember where the UK is around there, and we've got from there to the Arctic, and we've got 60 degrees south to Antarctica. And luckily again, the same sorts of things are happening. Uh, they're mirrored on both. So to start with, we've got this warm air rising, and we've got quite warmer air coming down this way. And if I just do the two at the same time, it's easier. So it's, remember, a mirror image. And then cooler going this way. And then sinking. 
and then cooler and sinking. Just realized that should be red. There we go. Okay, now these ones, they're not bigger, it's just the way, they're not in reality, they're not bigger, it's just the way the diagram looks because it's not 3D. Um, these are called, quite easily to remember, the polar cells. And there's a polar cell down here as well. Okay. Um, and these are, these cause a lot, so you've got the air falling, so you've got high pressure and sinking air, which if you think about it, is very similar to what we see happening in the polar regions. So high pressure, that's sinking air, um, giving sort of weather conditions that can be, you know, can be stormy there by all means, but often with high pressure, we tend to see lighter winds um, and very cold conditions. And that's true of these regions. Now we're going to add um, some wind to this now, which is going to, I'm almost loath to do it, but you do need to know a little bit about how the wind moves around the earth. So up in the poles, we have something called the polar easterlies. Now, if you're not familiar with your compass points, don't worry, because we'll just add one in over here quickly. So if you just draw little compass in and for this you don't need very detailed compass you can just have north south east and west and just the middle points so northeast southeast southwest and northwest okay that'll just help you when we're talking about the winds that are occurring um now, in the Arctic, these polar easterlies move in this direction. And I'm just drawing on, these are like, kind of like trade winds that occur on the planet all the time. And these are the, the normal prevailing wind direction. If you're a sailor, or if you windsurf or spend time on the water, you might know that in our area, we get our prevailing wind direction is from the southwest. So as I draw these arrows, they are going from the southwest. Okay, that's everywhere on our latitude experiences that. Now, between the equator and 30 degrees north, they have something called the trade winds, okay, which go in this direction. Okay, I'm just going to add a little arrow in there. And the trade winds, just the other side of the equator in the southern hemisphere, they're almost like a mirror image, but they just go slightly different. There we go. And then the westerlies, which we experience, um, are more sort of from the northwest in this feral cell. Okay, just add one more in. So there you go. That is how air moves around Earth. That is the global atmospheric circulation model. Um, and it's useful not just on its own in the spec, but also when we think about um, weather patterns, extreme weather in the UK, um, and, and just like how, how things occur. Even if there was, for example, a volcano erupting in one part of the earth, um, these trade winds would move the ash to a, from one place to another. So it's useful to remember. In fact, just write trade winds onto your diagram. So there you go, hope that's helpful.